let's talk about sugar. And um, those of you who have heard me speak before, you might notice that this slide now has sweeteners uh, in it as well, because we have similar issues. Uh, we had a great discussion last night about fruit and um, you know whether people should be eating it, and I pulled the banana and the orange out of my pocket. <laughs> and uh, obviously, um, I, I, was, I was talking about um, modulation of fructose absorption, uh, and Dr. Brenda Davis did a great uh, description of it as well, with fiber. And so, uh, and for, for those of you, either please look us up on the internet or take a picture of the slide. Uh, I'd like to, everyone to understand that if you're eating fruit that has a lot of sugar without the fiber, and that would be mostly grapes and anything on sort of the left side, uh, the left upper portion of the graph, um, that's not going to be as good in terms of modulating your insulin response to, to food uh, as it would be if you were eating the things that are on the lower side. And so, yes, there's a lot of vegetables packed at the bottom where there's a lot of fiber and not much sugar at all. And then there are fruits that just have a lot of fiber, like raspberries and blueberries. They weren't my, uh, or uh, blackberries. I, they weren't my favorite until I saw that slide, and suddenly they are, because I want my insulin modulated. Um, so what happens? People say, well, you know, fructose may be handled differently. Well, when you eat uh, fructose, glucose, sucrose, or even white bread, which is the refined flour, you get the same response. It's a dose-related insulin response. That insulin actually causes uh, insulin resistance ultimately because of the obesity. The obesity is because insulin is really effective at driving nutrients into cells, particularly fat into fat cells. And so all of the hypertension, high triglycerides um, uh, result in plaque development, and that's how we end up with heart disease. So if I had to pick out one thing I wouldn't want people to have, it's high levels of insulin. Sugar itself, uh, uh, other than what it does to insulin, it actually does increase triglyceride levels, um, increases total cholesterol. Your good cholesterol goes down. Your LDL cholesterol has more sugar coating to it, which makes it more likely to uh, form clots or to promote clots. And all of this is reversible if people will stop eating the sugar. So with that background, it's pretty easy to understand uh, sort of getting away from the science for a moment and going to the epidemiology. You can actually understand why uh, the uh, large cohorts of, of data will say something like this curve. This is actually um, Journal of American Medical Association in 2014. And I'm so sorry when it came out because it meant that I had to give up my vegan Oreos, okay? But what it basically shows is that there's a curvilinear relationship between ingested sugar and mortality. Uh, and now you know why, but now you know that it actually, actually does exist. The surprise to many of us was uh, last year when people started talking about sweetened beverage and we we're looking, wait a minute, all of our advocacy, all of our laws uh, where we're trying to change things, we're talking about sugar sweetened beverages, aren't we? Turns out not. Okay, it's sweetened beverages, and it doesn't matter whether it's low uh, carbohydrate uh, sweeteners or actual sugar. If you're doing one of those per day, okay, uh, that's conferring about a 20% increased uh, risk of uh, developing diabetes. Okay, and so the low calorie sweeteners actually were called out by uh, an, an American Heart Association science advisory uh, last year. And I know they got a lot of pushback from people, but this was um, really worth uh, taking a look at, the science behind low-calorie sweeteners. They basically increase insulin levels, and when they uh, put people at risk, uh, this one, this is actually from the UK, saying that the artificial sweeteners uh, increase the risk of diabetes in just two weeks. Um, well, why is that? It's higher levels of glucose, that is, when you're eating a substance, and then you're drinking one of these sweeteners, the sweetener increases the absorption. And so this is the answer to the age-old question. I'm drinking the diet soda, but my weight isn't going down. It's because you're more efficient, if you want to say that, at absorbing the things that, uh, that you're eating. So your calorie count is going up by eating a no-calorie sweeter, sweetener. Okay? And so gut peptides and insulin, all increasing the risk of type 2 diabetes. Now, if I always talk about the nurse's health study, and this is one of the first ones that I saw, 
and it's relevant to the sugar uh, uh, discussion because uh, they try to analyze what are the risk factors or what are the correlates with nurses dying. And uh, it was the things that you would think, age, um, diabetes, smoking. But up in the right-hand corner, they had some, some snippets about diet. And that if you're eating fiber, which I'll talk about later, about a 16% decrease in mortality. If you're eating a cholesterol load, that's a, you know, a, an animal product, about a 17% increase in mortality. But that point estimate of 17% was actually exceeded by eating a, a sugar load, uh, that glazed donut, for example, uh, a 22% increase in mortality. So this is uh, telling us that uh, sugar might be worse than animals. Well, then you have the REGARDS trial, and I throw that one in here because it's a combination of everything. It actually looked at all of the American diets, divided them into the sweet fat, um, the, uh, the, con the convenience, fast food, the uh, uh, plant-based one, which was not vegetarian, but having uh, an extra, consciously doing an extra vegetable or two. Uh, but the red line um, that's going down the cliff there is showing you that you have a large number of heart attack, stroke, and death that is surviving without a, uh, an event is depicted on the graph. And that is with the southern diet. The southern diet is a lot of sweets, a lot of uh, juices, um, fried food, organ meats. It's common in the African-American population. And that is the, the uh, the one diet that correlates best with the development of stroke and stands out among the rest of them. So what do they find? In comparison with the other terrible American diets, you had a 30% increased risk of stroke, 56% increase of, uh, of heart disease. If you had kidney disease, which the diet promotes, you had a 50% increase in death. And so that particular diet is, is spectacularly worse than the others. Now, I always take a little break in here uh, to talk to the plant-based community because um, let me just do a show of hands. I don't think I've ever done this before, but I would just really like to know. How many of you are here uh, because of your health? Okay. How many of you are here because of animal rights? Okay. Okay. Oh, standing up, are you? Okay. How many are here because of environmental concerns? Okay. And how many of you are here of, you know, because of the social issue of, you know, we feed all our grain to animals and we can solve world hunger? Okay. Well, I saw a lot of hands go up four times. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, um, the, but, the, but the majority of people here, and again, this be the title of the conference, uh, Real Truth About Health, uh, the majority really are concerned about health and maybe the other issues are, are slightly uh, less prominent. But... The, uh, if you go globally in the United States, uh, because we are a select population based on the course title, the problem, I would say the majority of people who do plant-based nutrition are actually concerned about the other three, if, particularly if you add them all up. And so there is this thing called an unhealthful plant-based diet done by a lot of uh, folks, and it has uh, fried food, um, you know, very, the fast food that you would pick up, oh, I don't want the meat, I don't want to hurt an animal, I don't want the chicken nuggets, just give me the french fries. Um, I mean, and so if you look at that type of diet, refined uh, flour, a lot of sugar, uh, just regular uh, orange juice, which we used to think was health, so healthy for you, uh, what you see, uh, and it might be a little hard to see, but that dotted line on the right is the uh, incidence of heart uh, disease uh, death. It actually is above the red line, which is the animal products. So an unhealthy plant-based diet is actually worse. Uh, and this, the numbers there are very similar to what you saw with the nurse's health study, 22% versus 17%. Both bad, uh, unhealthy plant-based diet being worse. Uh, we had another very insightful article came, come out in 2017 that took a look at what it is that people uh, die from when they're doing uh, when an, a nutrition analysis. And at the bottom, you do see eating red meat. And anything more, that's about 14.3 grams, I think. Anything more than that in correlated with, uh, with death in men and women. And it did reach statistical significance, but it seemed, compared to the other things, to be relatively small. 
So there are some worse things. Above it was saturated fat. Above that is not eating enough whole grains. Above that is actually uh, having uh, the uh, sugar-sweetened beverages, okay? And then uh, not eating enough nuts, not eating enough vegetables. And the low omega-3 really did, I believe, is a statistical phenomenon that it's not telling everyone here that you have to change your diet to eat fish. It's telling the people who are not vegans that they should be eating fish instead of the animal product, the other animal products that are more dangerous than fish. Um, then you go above that, and it's um, uh, you should be eating nuts. You should uh, not be eating um, uh, processed meat. And it's interesting that the slide says a high level of processed meat, but the definition of high is greater than zero. Okay? And that's the way it should be. Uh, and at the top, more than 2,000 milligrams of sodium uh, for the general population. We said 1,500 for hypertensives, but uh, more than 2,000 for the general population is something to avoid. Um, one of the controversial nutrition articles that came out, uh, and there's been several of these, the PURE trials, where they look at 18, <clears throat> some, depending on where they're getting the data, some of the times the PURE trial has 19 or 21 countries, um, and excluding the United States, and putting together the data uh, on, from nutritional questionnaires and then comparing that, those with death. And I think they've been very in, insightful to have um, uh, the sort of disruptive uh, idea that people should be eating fat instead of carbohydrates is the way the press interpreted this. But that's actually not, if you read the details in the, in the PURE trial, you actually have uh, in the methods that the carbohydrates, the processed uh, sugar, processed flour, uh, white rice, these are rapidly absorbed carbohydrates, just like I was talking about 10 slides ago. And that is more dangerous than eating fat from animals. <clears throat> and so if you were to, to decrease the carbohydrate intake and continue to eat animals, your cardiovascular mortality, your total mortality would actually go down. Uh, but the best thing you could do is to take uh, your um, polyunsaturated uh, fat instead of rapidly absorbed carbohydrates, as well as de decreasing the saturated fat. Uh, they found that as well. Okay. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the politics, and a lot of this was mentioned last night, but uh, I'll go into it a little more just because it's something that uh, concerns me. I had been working on trying to get more healthy foods, and uh, one of the congressmen, Earl Blumenauer from uh, Oregon, came up to me, uh, came to one of our American College of Cardiology meetings when I was president. He wanted to meet, he wanted to talk, um, and this is what he told me. And I kind of looked it up and just made a slide out of, you know, does the United States actually allocate money to produce junk food? And the answer is uh, yeah. And uh, if you look at it, it's billions of dollars that uh, goes towards things that will decrease the health of our population. And uh, I kind of, uh, after looking at it and, and looking at the articles, uh, it's really just shocking. Uh, high fructose corn syrup, corn syrup, corn starch, uh, vegetable shortening, these are the things that our dollars are going uh, to make less expensive by subsidizing them which means that they can be sold at, at lower prices, which drops the price of the product. And who then is going to eat them? It's going to be people who are underprivileged, have lower socioeconomic status, and want cheaper food. Uh, very simple. And there's the poster child. This product actually has 14 different ingredients that are subsidized by our government. And that's why uh, something as complex as that could actually be so inexpensive. Okay, so if you take the hostess Twinkie um, and uh, fry it, <laughs> you can make it even more tasty. Um, you can do what Weird Al used to do, is to you know, split it and put a hot dog in the middle of it. Um, so there are worse things than a Twinkie, but uh, if you wrap it, the Twinkie around it, it's even worse, okay. All right, so a little audience analysis just to perk everybody up. How many calories do you think there are in that package of, of 10 Twinkies? Yeah. 
<laughs> it's actually 1,500, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So how much spinach do you have to eat to get 1,500 calories? <laughs> so yeah, it's actually 15 pounds. And so, um, you know, that goes back to that Juliana Hever slide that the calorie density is so important and being able to um, change the, our concepts and change our eating habits isn't easy, uh, but we're trying. And so by we, I mean that uh, American College of Cardiology and uh, uh, Physicians for Responsible, uh, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, who does work with the uh, District of Columbia American Medical Association, um, we all get together and we go to, at our poor AMA colleagues and inundate them with nutrition stuff. And the funny thing is, I've, I've been an AMA delegate for cardiology, uh, one of four of us uh, since uh, I think 2001. And one thing I've found about the American Medical Association is they're extremely smart and extremely concerned. If you tell the House of Delegates something that's logical, that's going to help people, they always adopt it. So sure enough, they adopted our resolution to um, uh, decrease consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages. So of course, now we would know, because that was before the publications on low-calorie sweeteners, so it's not just sugar-sweetened beverages. Uh, we've been trying to get the um, uh, hospitals to have more healthy food. Um, and we've been trying to get them to uh, promote nu nutrition um, that are, that's a positive nutrition in schools. And we'll just keep going after AMA policy until we can uh, help our American population and our physicians. Thank you. Um, before I leave the, the uh, sugar thing, I just want you to understand that I do know how difficult this is. Um, and I, I do remember how great it felt to sit there working uh, and looking over after I finished, uh, you know, 50, 15 or 20 charts, um, got all the notes done, and I'm looking over and that whole package of Oreos is gone. Uh, it, it really is a problem. It's dopamine in your brain, uh, as well as the sugar uh, make, giving you a sugar high. And uh, as the dopamine wears off and the insulin drives your sugar back down, you feel the only thing that makes you feel better is to do it again. And so uh, people get caught up in this sugar addiction cycle, uh, and the only way to break it is to, to try and stop it cold, um, decrease it um, very gradually and very thoughtfully, um, use a lot more water, use uh, more fruit so that there's fiber, uh, do substitutes of healthier sugars that are modulated by the fiber. Uh, so that you can uh, get out of this, and uh, hopefully everyone will avoid the concentrations of sugar that can trap them. Um, are there sweeteners? I did promise you that there, uh, there are a couple sweeteners that do not increase your insulin levels. This is one of them from the literature, uh, one of very few randomized trials of sweeteners. Uh, they were actually looking to see the effects on obesity because they knew that it would not increase insulin levels, therefore it shouldn't increase obesity. And this um, uh, substance called yacon syrup, yacon is a um, root from South America. And it turns out that in this randomized trial, using it for, I think it was uh, four months, resulted in about a 30 pound weight loss. And so um, you, know, you see people, uh, usually see people at the conference, I show this slide and I see them getting on their phone, going to Amazon and ordering it. Uh, um, it, it does taste sweet. There is one side effect you should know about, Increased defecation frequency, okay? Um, so, but for the constipated people, that actually probably would help. Uh, but it increases satiety. That seems to be the thing that makes a difference, okay? Uh, there is another one uh, that a good friend of mine has actually uh, 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 let me know about, and I said, I'm not so sure about this erythritol stuff, um, but looked it up, and you can see that the insulin response is not zero, but it's really negative. So you don't have a lot of calories. That's another sweetener that you might consider if, you're, if you've just got to have that sweet taste, um, but you really are, are conscious of the insulin response.